Hello everyone. How is everyone doing this evening? It is Thursday, the 23rd of January. Hello, Carol. I was so confused there for a second. I hadn't hit go live yet and your message popped up and I was like, whoa, can they see me already? I was gonna be really embarrassed because I had just burped. <laughs> I was gonna be like, oh no. I didn't think they could see me. <laughs> Tonight we're gonna do an Inkscape video. We're gonna be using all of the tools that we have learned so far. We're gonna be creating text and shapes. We're gonna be using the Union tool and uh, a couple of other things. Hello, Vicki. And uh, yes, so that's what we're doing. Uh, one of my good friends over on Facebook, Miss Kitty, had asked me during the Creative Crew Live on Tuesday when we were doing another Inkscape tutorial. And tomorrow I have my dentist appointment. And uh, so thank you, Carol, for thinking about that. Hello, Mabel. And uh, so yes, I don't think I'll be making an Inkscape tutorial tomorrow <laughs> after my root canal. So I thought tonight I have free. Let's go ahead and do a tutorial on Inkscape and we're going to be recreating my logo. So I know you probably don't want to make one that looks just like mine, but using the techniques that we go over in today's tutorial, hello everybody, then maybe you can recreate one of your own in a unique, different kind of way following the steps that we do in tonight's tutorial. Hello, hello everybody. So how is everybody doing? Have you started using Inkscape yet? If you have, what have you done so far? I'd be curious to know before we get started. I thought we'd have a second, just to chit chat for a second. It's so great to see you. I don't usually come live in the evenings, but Harlan is at church uh, volunteering because he's serving on Sunday on the production team. And so he's gone tonight till about nine o'clock. So I thought what better time than to come this evening and do this tutorial. Scriptures, veggies and thimbles, Northern Virginia. I'm in Williamsburg, Virginia. Hello. Northern Virginia is so pretty. So yes, if you've started using Inkscape, what do you think of it? Do you like it? Have you found it useful? Do you find it confusing? Oh, your computer's in the shop. Well, when you get it back, hopefully you'll come back and revisit this tutorial. And if you have time and you wanna hang out with us, I'd love to have you stick around for a little bit. What we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change some screens around. When I do that, let me see if I can pull up this live on my phone. I won't be able to see your comments on my screen. However, maybe I can follow along on my phone. So I have that up. If you have any questions, you can ask them and if I miss them, uh, I'll go back through and see. Yeah, I'll go back through. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and change some screens around. It is going to look funny for just a little bit as I transition all of my screens. I'm just going to wait because there's a little bit of a delay. I want to make sure you see my Inkscape screen up on the monitor. And I'll just wait for one second as that pops over. Wow, there's quite a bit of a delay. All right, it's changing over now. Okay, yes, I see it on the screen. We can continue. <laughs> All right, so here is my logo that I have been using for 
uh, about a month and a half since the new year. And uh, so several of you have asked how I created it. And we have learned several different techniques in Inkscape to this point. And so today we're going to put them to use and actually recreate my logo. So the only thing that I ask is that you be patient with me because I might fumble through the steps a little bit, but hopefully not. <laughs> Yes, scriptures and veggies. Uh, the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival is coming to Hampton. Uh, I don't know if you're into quilting or not. Oh, yes, you are. You go quilt shop hopping. Do you go to the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival? That's coming at the end of February. Maybe we could do a meetup. Okay, I'm going to leave my logo up on the screen so that we can see what we are trying to create, okay? I'm just going to leave that right over here. So first, let's start with some basic shapes. Let's recreate this circle along the outside edge of my logo. I'm going to come right over here to the left side menu, create circles. I'm going to hold down the control button on my keyboard and I'm going to drag out a circle. We're going to make it rather large so that we can see what we're doing. All right, we have our circle. The very next thing I'm going to do is to create this wider band right here that you see on my logo. If you see my mouse moving right here. <laughs> so with my circle shape selected, I'm going to hold down Control D, Duplicate. You can also find that in your menu uh, under, let's see, where would that be? Oh, right here, duplicate, right in this menu here. So now I have two circles. You can see both of them on the screen. To make this really easy, the circle that's on top, I'm going to change to a different color. So now it's pink and the top one, the pink one is selected. Holding down my control button, I'm going to drag one of my corner arrows and resize my circle. Okay, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to then hold down my shift button and also select the bottom circle, the larger one at the same time. So you'll notice two boxes on your screen. Both circles are selected. Let's go up to this menu and open up the align and, distrib align and distribute box. With both of my circles selected, I'm going to come right over here and I'm going to uh, choose last selected and I'm going to center this pink circle right in the middle of the bottom gray circle. You'll see how it's perfectly centered within that shape now. I've unselected both circles. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit on the pink circle and I'm going to make a copy of it, okay? I'm going to duplicate that and just make a copy of it and bring it over to the side to work with in just a minute. I'm going to come back to both of these circles select them both and we are going to um, go to path and difference. What that's going to do is cut the pink circle away from the bottom gray circle. So here is our outer ring for our logo. Next, let's recreate this inner ring that you see right here. Let's move that back, align and distribute. I have both of my items selected. I'm going to center that pink circle right in the center. Now I'm going to resize that circle. 
I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to select the outer ring one more time and center that pink circle and see how that looks. What I'm looking at now is the space between my circle and this outer ring. I'd like to add some text there and I think we still need to go a little bit smaller with this circle. That looks really good. That looks like it would be perfect size to fit some text within this white space. So now that I have resized this pink circle, let's make a copy of it. So now there is one more pink circle on top. I'm going to change the color to orange. Okay, so now there's two circles there. Again, we're going to create this little ring just the same way we did with this, this outer ring. I'm going to resize the orange circle and center that within the pink circle. And for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll keep that size that we created. Before we move on, I'm going to select this outer pink circle, the biggest circle in the middle. I'm going to make a copy of it and I'm going to move that over to the side now. Okay, so now I have, whoopsie, I have this little pink circle and we're just going to hold on to that one for just a minute. I'll show you what we're going to do with that in just a minute. Let's go back to these two circles. I've selected the orange one. I'm going to hold down the shift button and select the pink one. And I'm going to go to path and difference. Now it's created this inner ring right inside. Next, let's create this box that you see my company name in the middle. We can go over to the left side menu. We're going to create a rectangle and it can be any shape or size. Right now we are just getting things situated. You can make it however big you want. I'm going to select my rectangle and I'm going to select this outer ring and center that right in the middle. I actually like the size of this rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my rectangle. I'm going to hit duplicate and I'm going to move that right over to the side. And we're going to save that for a minute too. Okay. The first thing we want to do at this point is we want to cut away the rectangle shape from both our inner ring and our outer ring. Okay, so I'm going to select my rectangle and I'm going to select this inner ring. I'm going to go to path and difference and you'll see now that it has cut my inner ring at the top and at the bottom. Let's select our rectangle one more time. Let's hit duplicate and make a copy. Let's go to this outer ring. Let's put that right back in the center. We're going to select both the rectangle and then outer ring. And again, we're going to go to path and difference. And now we've cut our outer ring as well. So you'll see there's a space missing that fits perfectly with our rectangle. Now let's go ahead and select our ring rectangle and this outer ring. Let's center it one more time. So there we go. Now let's cut out the inside of our rectangle. I'm going to select the rectangle one more time. I'm going to make a copy with duplicate. Let's change the color of this top rectangle. I'm going to click on the top rectangle and I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. 
I'll select both rectangles and center this top rectangle, the pink one is centered with the orange one. I can select the orange one. So now both rectangles are selected. And uh, we're going to go to path and difference. So now we have several different objects here, but nothing is combined yet. Okay, I can select on this orange box and that is an object. I can select on this inner ring and that is an object. And this outer ring is an object. Let's center them all back together. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to select this orange rectangle and we're going to select the inner ring and we're going to go to path and union. Now that has joined that as one object. Now we can select on that and we can select our outer ring, path and union. And now that is one object and it's all welded together, okay? You can even see that it has nodes. So if you wanted to cut this out in vinyl, you could do that at this point. So now we have our shape and we're ready to add some text, right? So we have saved this circle. Let's select both objects and center that circle right in there. You'll see that circle is perfectly the same size as our inner ring. However, we want our text to be floating in this white space surrounding this area. So let's increase the size of our circle a little bit. And we can just keep checking that. Checking the size, that's a little bit too big. There we go. You can see that now when we add our text to this pink circle, there's going to be some space between the edge of this circle and our inner ring. That'll give the illusion that your text is floating in this space here. So now let's create some text, okay? We're going to create the text that goes on the top uh, of our logo first. And at any point you have a question on how any of these tools work, you can revisit uh, some of my tutorials. Uh, once this video is posted, I will have this in a playlist and all of my videos for Inkscape are grouped together. I'm going to decrease the spacing in between each one of the letters. I'm just going to see how that would fit right in there. That's a little bit big. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. All right, now, now that I have the spacing and the size exactly the way that I want it, I'm just going to move that over to the side the same way we did with our circle, okay? I'm going to select on this text. I'm going to hit duplicate. I'm going to bring down a copy of it. With my copy selected, I'm going to click on my circle. We're going to go to this top button, text, and put on path. Now you'll see it put the text on the bottom of the circle. We can fix that by um, selecting our circle, clicking twice, and you'll see a little curved arrow up in the corner. We're just going to rotate that circle until our text goes up at the top. Just like that. 
Now we want our text to stay like that, so let's select our text, go up to Path, and Object to Path. Now our text is going to stay like that. Now let's put some text in the bottom space as well. I'm going to select on this text over here and duplicate that. Bring down a copy of it. Click on that twice and we can edit the text. We can select our circle one more time. Now both the text and the circle are selected. We're going to go back up to this top menu text and put on path. To rotate our text down to the bottom, I've clicked my circle two times and we will rotate that and position it exactly where we want it to be. Whoops, there we go. And while, uh, let's see, let's select the text. Whoops, <laughs> I got ahead of myself. While both your text and your circle are selected, we're going to mirror image. And that flips our text right side up on the inside of that curve. Now we can remove, whoops. <laughs> Let's go ahead and select our text, go to path, object to path. Now we can remove our circle and we can get rid of our circle. We need to resize our text just a little bit so that it fits right inside that bottom space. Now all we have left to do is to put our name inside the box so I can use this text that we've already typed out. And we can make that bigger. I'm going to hold the control button and just drag this out by selecting one of these corner arrows and then I'm just going to make it a little bit taller like that. Now we can select our logo and center everything right in there. Let's go ahead and make all of this one color so I'm just going to drag a box around everything that has selected all of my objects and we can pick any color just like that and now we can group all of these objects together. Let's see, group, 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 there we go, under object and group. Now whenever you click on it, it's going to move as one solid, uh, one solid object, okay? Now don't forget, let's ungroup this for a second. If you wanted to cut this out with a vinyl cutter, you're going to have to change your text from an object or a text to an object. So we go up to path and object to path. That's going to assign nodes to each one of your letters. If you're just printing, you do not have to do this. But if you're wanting to send this to a vinyl cutter, some kind of cutting machine, then you need to go through the steps of uh, assigning your text to a path. And that's it. We have used, let's see, we have used basic shapes. We've used the text tool. We've used putting text on a path. We've used the union tool and the difference tool. So that combines all of my tutorials so far to this date and gives you something that you can follow along and with these tools you can create your own logo. Ah, oh, my honey is here. <laughs> so yes, uh, let's see. 
I'm going to leave this up, but switch you back over and uh, so that I can see the chat a lot easier. And if you have any questions, then we can go over that. Diane, you'll have to go back and watch the replay, if, especially if you're interested in learning how to use Inkscape and all of the tools that we've learned to this point, and then you can create a logo like you see right there. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Scriptures, veggies, and thimbles. You've never been to the quilt show? Oh, it is humongous. They have uh, so many quilts. Half of the convention room is filled with quilts. And then the other half is filled with vendors who sell fabric, quilting tools, long arms, sewing machines, embroidery machines, thread, quilt kits. Oh, it is so much fun. They do classes. Yes. It, uh, Hampton if, uh, is about 30 minutes away from me. So three hours, you could be there. Yes, you'll have to go back and watch the tutorials. Uh, Inkscape is good for so many things. Like if you want to print images on fabric, you could do that. You could create your own images on fabric. If you want to cut out vinyl for shirts, you could do that with Inkscape. You could make your own applique templates to trace or to cut with a cutting machine. All kinds of stuff you could do with Inkscape. Yes, Helen, you'll have to go back. Uh, once this video is done and uploaded, uh, it'll be in a playlist on my channel. And so you'll see all the videos in one place. And you can just start at the beginning and work your way down. Ooh, it's cold in here. Yes, a meetup at the quilt show would be so much fun. They have a little, uh, like a concession stand there. But uh, it's in the heart of Hampton, and there's so many places that you can get to really quickly from there, too, like Jason's Deli. Really good place to eat. Ooh, I'm freezing. So let me go through these comments and see if I've missed any questions. If you have questions about Inkscape, now is a great time to ask while I have it open. And I'll just go through real, real quick and see if we have any. And if not, we're going to end tonight's live because I do want to try to keep these videos really short. And so that if you're just trying to learn Inkscape, uh, we get to the point, we answer questions, and then we can go to the next video. <laughs> yes, Diane, he is the cello player. He's so good. He's only had it less than a week, too. Okay, I think that's all of the things that I wanted to show you tonight. What's really great is that you can pull this tutorial up and tab over, open up Inkscape, follow along. If you run into, you know, a question or you know, an issue, you can pull back the video, rewatch it, go back to Inkscape, try it again. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to jump down to the comment section uh, and ask them. And I'll try to be really quick in getting back to you. I really hope that this uh, tutorial is helpful and really puts um, a purpose, an apple, apple, a way that you can apply what we've already learned and create something of your own. So there was a reason why we started at the very beginning and we've learned these tools so that we can now create a logo like that. Kitty, this was just for you, you're here. This is uh, Inkscape. And once this video is uploaded, I'll have a link for Inkscape. It's a free 
vectorizing and designing software, or you can go to inkscape.org and download it. Uh, the version that I'm using in today's tutorial is 0 0.91. And uh, yes, it is so much fun. Yay, I'm so glad you saved my tutorials. I love spending time with you. And uh, yes, that makes me so happy. All right, y'all, I'd love to stay in chat. If y'all want to join me over on Facebook, send me a message. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and close this live and keep it really short. Okay? If you create your own logo, tell me about it down in the comment section. Until I see you the next time, I hope you have fun creating. And don't stop learning. And don't forget, I'm not the only one creating Inkscape tutorials. There's hundreds of them out there. So, uh, yeah, feel free to learn ahead of me. I'm not quite sure what we're going to cover next, but until I see you next time, have fun creating. Bye, everybody.